let's read one more time as um, the Romans chapter eight and verse nine. Romans eight, so powerful, and I'm just amazed by the whole chapter, and I hope you like it too. And Romans chapter eight and verse nine, it says, "You, however, are the control, controlled by not by the sinful nature, but by the spirit." If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. I want to ask you a question. Are you happy? What is your answer? Amen. Amen. You're happy. Yeah, you look like a, you you look like happy as can be. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a praise the Lord. That's the why. You know, sons used to uh, uh, son is the one um, that gives her the momentum to, to be happy and live on. Yeah, if you have uh, sons and daughters and uh, when you hear something good news out of your sons and daughters, it gives you more happiness like that. We, we have to be hap happy. I mean, it is not an option, but it is a must. We have to be happy because we're born here, raised up here, and we are proclaiming that sons and daughters of God, and we should, we should be happy. There's not an option. Because Bible tells us, 3 John 2, 3 John has no chapter, just chapter 1, so either 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, but some, simply 3 John 2, that means verse 2, he says, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So as long as your physical body and also your soul, your um, spirituality, uh, mental body, all together, this is our wish because we are born image of God and we have to be happy. So there's a key how we can be happy all the time. That's why I brought up issue, the formula of joy. When you study mathematics, some people like mathematics, some people doesn't like that much. But we all understand that there is a formula in mathematics. If you can master that formula, the structure, and it, it'll be pretty easy going when you solve the problems and easy to uh, get the answer. But if you do not know the formula, it's way beyond, far beyond your expectation and you can't solve the problem. There's a formula of joy too. Unlike a history book, you have to uh, read and memorize some historic events, the dates, and some uh, detail. But in, in the formula in mathematics, we have some uh, good options to mess up, as long as you know what the formula is. Let's use our uh, formula applying to our uh, religious life. We all believe in Jesus. That's why we are here. And we are looking forward to seeing Jesus again in the new future. So what does that mean, uh, believing Jesus? W what is the concept of faith? What is the belief in your life? Hebrews chapter 11 clearly dictates that what we should believe. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hebrews 11.6. So to summarize those two elements, so believe, what do we believe? Believe what? Tell me, you just read. You should remember. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Lorena. The first one is God. There is God, existence of God. And the second element is that the God is not punishing God, but he is a rewarder. He is going to give you some reward. Good God. The word reward means, um, the, the Greek word here, mythopadotades. Mr. Padotets, like that. So it literally it means a rewarder, the one who rewards, right? And one who pays wages, so reward. So you're not supposed to take, take something back based on what you have done, but like a king, something you can never get it from by yourself. But he's going to give you something good. He's a rewarder. So we may think that, OK, there's uh, many rewards, right? Uh, if you go to a Costco and pay uh, through the credit card, and after a year, what happens? It's a cash reward, something. But not like that. God is going to give you the best of the best. So we may think that the eternal life is the ultimate the reward from God. You can't get it by your work. If you work hard, if you get it, that's not the reward. Reward comes from God regardless of your behavior. He is the, uh, this is a gift. Like the Christianity, if those who decided to follow Christ has to uh, climb, climb up the Mount Everest. How many can you uh, make it? Is it, is it eight, 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 four, eight meter high from the sea level in uh, meter uh, measurement? But the everlasting life, it is a gift from God. Those who decided to follow him, and he believes in God is there, and he's the rewarder. And it is through our faith, the ultimate, uh, the everlasting life is given, given to you. There are many happinesses, the joy in, in the worldly uh, term. Some people is so, uh, so extreme to enjoy their pleasure. And once I uh, listened to, I mean, the, watched this uh, video clip the other day, there are some people who enjoyed uh, this. Do you, do you see um, the selfie at the top of the building and, and just do something? And this is the story. Some people really enjoyed it. And if you can give me a million dollars to me to do this, and I'm not going to do that. You know, this is not my time. So uh, this is a building from uh, uh, China. I don't know how, how high uh, this building is, but pretty uh, tall building. So these two, three guys sneaked in at the back door and climbed up the, the, the stairs and going all the way up. Why? Why do they do this? Because it gives them some pleasure. And all they wanted to do is to uh, take some selfie pictures and post it in Instagram, Facebook. And there are thousands of thousands of followers, and they just enjoy it, you know. So almost there, they just climb up the ladder. This is cold, you know, bare, with the bare hands all the way up, 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 up. And you can see how high it looked like. So they climb up the uh, antenna all the way up. 
So three guys, look at that. And uh, take out the camera. It's their term of pleasure. And take some pictures. That's not good enough, not high enough. Climb up again. Look at that. See? The hands, almost white. No blood circulation. Too cold. The iron bar. Say all the way up. Hit the top. Now he is the top of the world. See? There is no safety net. If they uh, miss it, they are going to die. But this is the, the purpose. They just wanted to take pictures like that. <laughs> oh, dear. Come on. So why do they do this? Can you understand? I, I can't. And you know what? Some couples, so dating couples, they ask the partner out and do this too. <laughs> like this, just holding on the hand. And the lady and gentleman. I'm so happy because my wife never is going to ask me out in the top of the building and to do this and take, take uh, uh, some uh, photos, taking some photos. By the way, today is my 27th anniversary. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I didn't mean it, but uh, you know, look at that. And I appreciate my wife's character. <laughs> Now I have to calculate how many years. Oh, it goes too too long. And uh, one of the tips that I have is that uh, count my uh, first son's age and plus one. <laughs> That's uh, easy. Um, so uh, according to uh, the report, there is uh, some researcher. Why do people do this? Why? So the researcher found. 15 selfie takers died in uh, 2014, 39 in 2015, and 73 died in the first eight months of 2016. People can die, and eventually they, they just fall off and they're dead. And there's a researcher from uh, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. His name is Henmark Lamba. This is uh, what he found. Hemank he he and his team of researchers found there had been 127 recorded incidents of selfie death across the world. 76 of those took place in India, nine in Pakistan, eight in this country in the United States, and six in Russia. The most likely cause of death was falling from a great height, with people going to extreme length to take a selfie on clips of the top of the building to impress followers on social media. There's a Russian guy, Kirill, Kirill Oreshikin, He's followed by 17,000, 17,900 people in Instagram. But uh, 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 there's another, uh, the guy, uh, Drew uh, Sick, but he died in uh, 2015 after falling from a building. And there is a report then in October 2016, only 12 year old girl known as Oka Oksana B died after climbing into the railing of the balcony to take a, uh, take a selfie. I don't know, 12 year old. We have a 12 year old girl here? No? Nobody? Okay. Very, very young. But why do they do this to, to exercise some extreme uh, uh, pleasure? There's another study shows that called Dysoroth. 
MD and PhD. Carl Dyseros is a professor of bioengineering and uh, psychiatry and uh, behavior sciences in uh, Stanford University. He tested it uh, using a small uh, mouse. And some mouse, they found, the team found, some mouse is a risk, risk taker. Some others are not. So they are uh, testing some um, instrument. A type of mouth, the mouse is enjoying a very constant uh, chocolate milk. Not many, but when you uh, push the lever and constant chocolate milk comes. Another time is that risk taker. When, when the mouse hit the bar, and not always the chocolate mix comes out, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, huge chocolate milk comes out. It's kind of uh, playing with a lot, right? So that's a risk taker. So the scientists found that, why do they do this? It is called the nucleus accumbens, that little part here. This is a frontal cortex, this type. And this, uh, that, that area kind of uh, um, uh, send out some dopamine, which cause we feel the, uh, the pleasure, the extreme pleasure, like that. So some mouse doing that kind of a risk taking, the dopamine comes out. So they, they have to, uh, they have to do this because of the pleasure. So dopamine acceptor. Likewise, some people, if they are not satisfied with the level of pleasure, they think it is pain. So they are just keep doing. So this same area is related to uh, drug abuse. Now, all kinds of uh, addiction, money, drug, smoking, alcohol, sex, all kinds of addiction. It is uh, controlled by that uh, little part. So they have to do something because otherwise they feel it is a pain, it's a painful. So they just do this and do that. So the worldly scientist teaches us that it is our tendency to meet the maximum pleasure. This is a society that maximize our pleasure and minimize our pain. This is a society, the orientation. But we can't, we can't be satisfied our pleasure like this way. Because we are spiritual being. Something has to replace the pleasure with the real thing, the spirituality. Romans chapter 8, we are going back to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, this is the law of spirit of life, set me free from the law of sin and death. So when you hear there's no condemnation, and we are free. And this is going to be our ultimate satisfaction if we are spiritual being and belongs to Christ. And verse 5 goes on, those who live in accordingly, according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset, mindset on what the spiritual desired. The mind of sinful nature, sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. This is really important. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. 
So we have to ask our, uh, to ourselves that I am a person, the spiritual person, or just person. Because we, if we are spiritual, uh, spiritually developed and spiritual person, and we can seek some real happiness and joy and pleasure in Christ. That uh, the Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22, the result of our spiritual being is like this. We can harvest. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. In verse 23, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. We are not making those elements. We are not making love. We are not making uh, joy. We are not making peace. We are not making patience. But automatically, if we are the men of God, children of God, and this kind of a character comes out through our lives. So we can test it. Okay, let me see. Oh, am I a man of love? Am I a man of joy? Am I a man of uh, patience? But when you apply those elements with God, everything is perfect. God is love. God is joy. God is peace. God is patience. So our goal is to uh, follow Christ. And those characteristics, our characters like this, will be produced automatically through our lives. I'm going to introduce one uh, Korean professor in, in Korea. Uh, I don't know, he has an English name, but his name is Ingang. Last name is Kim. Such a uh, sad, sad story at the beginning, but a fruitful story at the end. Because uh, he was, his, his father was a very, he's from very poor family. And he has a lot of uh, siblings. Um, he, was the, he was the youngest. He has five other uh, siblings, but he was the youngest. So he was the youngest among six. And sadly, he was stricken by polio at the age of two. So sad, I mean, devastating disease. And now uh, the vaccination and everything has got improved and we cannot see the polio patients anymore. I think it's, it's exterminated, right? But uh, back then, still, when I was in elementary school, there are, in my class, maybe one or two uh, polio uh, students, and very sad. And so he was not accepted in uh, elementary school. Back then, he wasn't, he wasn't because you're polio, and you're not a regular stu normal student, and you can't study in our school. He was devastated. He was abused by his father verbally, because his father used to say that you are useless and told his mom that take this boy out and throw him away like that. So devastating. But somehow uh, through his sister, he went to uh, the rehab, rehab center, which means uh, rehab plus the education, the system, so he could study. And now uh, he, he, he could go to a uh, high school and very uh, famous and very good school in, in maybe one of the top uh, university, universities in uh, Korea, Seoul National University. And he went to uh, uh, Berkeley um, near here and got PhD and got back home and became a professor. So he is teaching uh, mathematics. So meanwhile, in his college, he met Christ through, uh, uh, through uh, his friends. And when he heard the story of Jesus, all kinds of uh, insulting, you know, he got uh, spat on his face and bruised and got hurt. 
and even got naked and cross, uh, crucified on the cross. And that story ref reflected on his, his life and he could begin to uh, forgive his father. And now he can embrace everything. And his formula of joy is like this. Our iniquity and our sin, just put it um, like a zero. And uh, forgiveness and love put as infinite. So actually our joy, our joy is, we can make, make an equation, our joy equals to uh, our God's love divided by our sin. Our God's love is infinite. You know, when you trying to divide uh, infinite by any numbers and it goes infinite. So the number remains infinite and our joy is going to be infinite. Now uh, he, I mean, after, after that he got married and he has uh, two, he has wife and he has two uh, children. And in his book he says like this, God taught me how, how not to depend on my flesh. While I was in sick bed, I learned how to pray, how to read the Bible, how to praise when even, uh, even if I'm in pain. And he says, I realized that the meaning of Abraham's understanding of the unseen promise, I recognized that hope means constant faith, even in a great despair. And he says, my conclusion ended up with unlimited love. The term of unlimited can't be understood as a limited human. We can't even apply it to, to us. However, it is so definite to God who is infinite, who is infinite, infinite love, unlimited forgiveness are God's terminology. And as I said before, uh, he, he could embrace all the difficult times and pains through God's love. And now he is teaching his son. He just wanted to give everything he has to his son. So when uh, his son was a little and he said, uh, he has, when he has a, a elementary uh, school son and he says like this, can you practice timetables? And the son says, why do you have to do that? And he said, suppose you buy some packages, then you, you can simply multiply those, not necessarily add them up. And he said, well, we can use the calculator. <laughs> and the other day he said, okay, let's, let's study English. And he said, why? Why do I have to do? And he said, well, would that be a good idea that you can speak English and you can uh, teach and you, you, sell, um, you sell products, you communicate others with English speaking people? And he said, why not have them learn Korean? <laughs> well, if they live in Seoul, they might learn Korean, but when you go abroad, you should learn their languages. Daddy, I can hire a translator, <laughs> interpreter, or this term, I can Google it. There's an app. So then he left to hang out with his friends. And this is what he said. I would like to give my son many, many things that I have, wisdom, materials, opportunities, and even my life without any hesitation. Now I think I may know how my Heavenly Father's, his mindset, how much he loves me. And he said, it is so difficult to be a dad. <laughs> Can you see that? Formula joy equals God's unlimited, infinite love divided by our sin. 
When you have a trouble, when you feel you are very unhappy, before you blame others and think about yourself, the relationship between you and Christ, there's some solution. If you have a very good relationship between you and Christ, mostly other problems will be, will be gone. Because the most important that gives us our happiness, joy, and pleasure is a relationship between God and us. That's because Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Can you, uh, did you notice that? Not simply say rejoice always, but what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord. Not rejoice always, but rejoice in the Lord. That's a key word. Rejoice in the, in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Romans chapter 8, verse 38, 39, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen? Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Likewise, may our Lord help us to feel the formula of joy should be the formula of our lives. I dearly hope that you and I should pray and we should enjoy the happiness, joy, and grace that only God can give and can bestow to the saints like you and, us, you and me. Hopefully, the joy and happiness and pleasure not comes from the worldly materials, the money, what you possessed based on uh, what you have learned, your diploma, your occupation, but from the Lord only. And this is the key that we can really rejoice in the Lord always. That's the formula of our, our joy today. I hope you get the message, and may our God bless you and forever. Shall we stand and have a closing hymn together?